Good morning, everyone. Um, I'll invite the panel up um, in a minute. In fact, if the panel come up while I uh, do the introduction, it'll probably be uh, most efficient use of time. Um, but just um, thanks, Bobby, for your uh, presentation. It really has set the scene very well for our, um, our discussion. Um, some really interesting ideas there. And um, a couple of things I want to do that just to set the scene for this session is talk a little bit about the definition of ancillaries. Um, ancillaries do cover a very, very broad range of things. Um, historically, a lot of the discussion about ancillaries was just what I will call flight-related ancillaries. So seat selection, priority boarding, meals on board, um, baggage, that sort of thing. But what, what we we're seeing the growth, or we're starting to see the growth, and very much where Bobby's presentation was coming from, is what we call non-flight-related ancillaries. So rental cars, hotels, transfers, activities, suitcases, car parking, you name it, whatever. Um, and picking up on the comments made yesterday in the uh, early session around owning the whole passenger experience, to own that whole passenger experience, um, the airline is going to need to sell them everything. So whether it be at the booking stage, I mean Ryanair were, I'm not sure if they still are, were selling Samsonite suitcases on their website. Um, the, the service to the airport, the airport services, the onboard services, the destination services, etc., etc. Can be a very long list of things. Um, and, and putting this in the context of the airlines, um, the very early LCCs, um, probably mostly US based, we called them no frills airlines, they didn't call them LCCs at that point. They basically got rid of the services, got rid of the ancillaries. You couldn't get a meal even if you wanted one. Um, that evolved and, and through the late 90s into the early part of this century, we saw the next wave of LCCs come on board and started to add back those services, but add them back in a way that you had to pay for them. So you bought your seat um, and then you could buy your seat assignment, you could buy your bag, you could buy your meal, you could buy your priority boarding, whatever. So it was that plus, plus, plus concept. What we've seen more recently, we've seen the wheel start to turn again and almost turn a full circle back to now, even the low-cost carriers uh, are offering a bundled offering. So, you know, looking at the Scoot website, I can buy a seat, and then if I do, I get the plus, plus, plus opportunity. But also, I can buy a seat in a bag, or I can buy a seat in a bag and a meal, um, or I can buy their business seat, which, which um, everything goes with it. So, we're actually seeing that cycle turn, um, particularly in relation to the, what I call, flight-related ancillaries. But that leaves then this whole big area of non-flight related ancillaries. And that's what I want to um, talk about a bit today with the panel. So if the panel come up, um, grab a seat. Uh, first, up, first up, we'll get the most comfortable chairs. One, two, three. Um, missing. Patrick. To have the comfy chairs. I'll sit in the economy seat. I normally do. <laughs> um, so, so to kick off, what I'm going to do is ask each of the panelists to um, introduce themselves, give a very brief introduction of their their, their airline, their business, um, and uh, and kind of what they're doing in the ancillary space. Um, we have a good range. We've got a full service airline. We've got a low cost carrier. We've got a um, Kim Hoi was telling me he calls his airline a high-cost, high-fare airline, which is a, a regional operation in Australia. Um, and then we have a um, hotel supplier, um, member of the panel, and it'll be interesting to hear her view of where um, their business fits into the, uh, into the airline space. So um, let's start off at the other end of the full-service carrier. Um, Patrick, will let you introduce yourself and, and uh, introduce um, uh, Lufthansa, who I'm sure everybody uh, knows well anyway. Yeah, good morning. Uh, one thing, there's not much to introduce to Lufthansa, so uh, <laughs> you, you know us. And uh, as Bobby just mentioned before, and there were, uh, it's, uh, I bet, uh, pretty fair if we say we're not the inventor of ancillary revenues. But saying so, we always charge for bags and extra bags and, and refund tickets and, 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 and. So we always had a part of it, but we never made it as in extra revenue so far. So uh, it would be nice to see and what the rest would go on for in the discussion. Hi, I'm Lim Kim Hai. I run an airline in Australia called Regional Express. 
it is a um, regional airline um, hubbing out of Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, a bit in Queensland, up Townsville, Keynes and so on. Um, totally focused on servicing the small towns. We, you, we have a fleet of um, Saab 340 turboprops um, seating 34 passengers. So, yeah, just um, 1 million passengers a year. Hello, so I'm Eva from Hotels Combined. So Hotels Combined is an aggregator, so Meta Search. So as Carl just presented for CAR, we are focusing on hotels. So we are on hotels price comparison. So Australian uh, based in Sydney, but we are covering uh, the world. So in 42 languages and all currencies. So we have people in every continent, so Europe, Asia, Middle East, uh, and APAC, of course. And uh, yeah, we'll discuss a bit more on how we can integrate these kind of products with airline. And good morning, everyone. I'm Stephen Wong. I come from uh, Spring Airlines. Uh, Spring Airlines is the uh, China's largest private-owned uh, airline, and also its uh, uh, first low-cost carrier in China. And today we have 50 aircrafts and operating in uh, about in six bases, uh, mainly Shanghai, uh, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Shijiazhuang, uh, Shenyang, and, Dab and, and Osaka. And uh, uh, we wish we can, uh, we can uh, uh, have a chance to commit with more people and, uh, and also exchange ideas with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Stephen, starting with yourself, what, what flight-related ancillaries do you sell today um, uh, for Spring Air? Uh, we have, uh, uh, just as, as traditional, we have uh, luggages, we have food and beverages, and also we also sell uh, seeds. Seeds. We have a, we have choice of seeds, and of, and also insurance. That's the uh, that's the big four, and also we have uh, uh, lots of. Uh, we have a, a visas, we have a private visas, and also we have a transportations, and a lots of uh, uh, non flight related products as well. So it's just like a and, and are you able to tell us what percentage of your revenue um, comes from ancillaries as opposed to just seats? Well, because uh, China, because it's like, uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's quite, because the uh, low cost penetration in China is quite low. And the, the custom behavior, the customer is not very familiar with the, with the product, with the LCC module. And uh, for just like last year, the low cost, um, the market share is only about five, six percent. So lots of customers, they are not familiar with low cost. So, and, and, uh, and then it's, and uh, that's why the, uh, we need to, we are still working on that. We're still trying to educate more customers. And that's why the, uh, today it's, it's not very high. The number is about, uh, last year was about 30, 40s for RMB for each customer. But we try to get, to, we try to uh, double it by this year. And, and are you offering a totally unbundled bundled solution? So I need to buy my seat and then buy my bag or buy my meal? Or, or are you offering a, a bundled uh, product or, or a mixture of both? Uh, we, we, we mix both because we have different customer propositions, and for most for most uh, price sensitive customers, and you know, that's that's no one, that, that's we have we we take, they need to buy everything, and also we have some kind of uh, we have called a Spring Plus, which is uh, targeted on the business customers, and we provide their uh, first two tiers of seats, and also the food and and, and almost and also the uh, more luggages. So jumping to the full service carrier, Patrick, um, do Lufthansa sell um, flight related ancillaries as an additional cost or is it all bundled? Oh, it's uh, uh, as my colleague just said, uh, we have it both. We've got unbundling, uh, that, if that's the name of the game, we'll follow up. Uh, but you were right, in the beginning, we set it as a service. Then we learned that people are willing to pay for their seat so we collect, but still, this is not our main business. We make the revenue by flying, and then we go on. But for the future, if, if we're looking forward, to me, the thing is, we have 
the NDC and the capabilities and the connectivity with that that comes up, the question would be how we make the sell and the merchandise in one to make it a more enjoyable ex to, to the customer and how we give him the experience and then the overall package. So there's the future for us. We've heard a lot um, in the other sessions uh, today and, and yesterday about you know, tailoring the offering to the, the customer, meeting the customer expectations. Um, what do you see as, or what do you see the customer expectations are of a full service carrier? Do you think the expectation is that I should get all those things bundled? I, I shouldn't have to pay um, for a bag, or I shouldn't have to pay for the select the seat I want to? Or do you think the, the, the wheels turning now, and even a full service um, airline, the customers are expecting to have to pay for some of these things that historically came free? At the moment, the wheel is turning in a way that we make the extra one because the customer expects the, the fare first. He looks on the price list and, and wherever the aggregators are, bam, 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 bam. So, so you want to be on, on top one, two, three, uh, and then we make the merchandise. But I think if we go next couple of years, we will see at least part of that coming back, as I just mentioned, and we will make it more the service again. So, Kim, hi, how about uh, with your business? Uh, are you um, unbundling in the sense of for those flight-related ancillaries or are those flight-related ancillaries coming as part of the, the deal with Rex? Given that our fares are pretty high, um, we offer everything that a normal legacy carrier would offer. So that's the expectations. So you would have things like catering, you would have assigned seating. So essentially, you know, you would have bags together with your fares. So there's expectation there's a minimum to be offered. And obviously, you try to then um, provide additional value in areas where the passengers do not expect as part of the fares. And of course, we do all the things that most, most carriers would do, like selling extra seat room and so on. But you could also try to go beyond that, leverage on IT, and see if you could you know, find other ways to provide value and where the customers, is, uh, passengers are willing to pay for it. So, for example, um, this was not something that I invented. I actually copied it from Verling, and I think they are the only ones who do it. Um, I fly Singapore Airlines all the time, and a day before, I will always get a text message from them, reminding me of the flight. Very good service, but I decided that perhaps I can sell this in Australia. We are the only ones who do it in Australia, and I think we are one of the few carriers in the world that sells a text reminder to the passengers. And uh, surprise, surprise, um, the Australians are quite happy to pay, and pay quite a lot for this. So you try to see if you know, there are things that you can do, in the case of Singapore Airlines, they give it away for free. I sell a tax um, reminder for Australian $2.80, and the take-up is fairly good. So you could, you could do this. You leverage on IT. You leverage on what you think would be the, the needs of the, your passengers. And then you try to be more and more creative. Um, there, there are other ways that I can think of that you could perhaps um, respond to the need, especially of the business travelers. Um, i give you an example that is in my mind and haven't achieved uh, doing it yet, but I think I will, I will do it soon. Um, business travelers very often like to have a confirmed seat, and then they like to also have backup plans because their plans change very often. However, you can only have one confirmed seat. You cannot be confirming three different seats uh, at one time for your return. So there is this idea that perhaps you could sell them the ability to uh, book out or to block out seats, a bit like uh, insurance. And to do that, of course, you need to have a lot of data about how your seats are selling, so that you know that the seat that you allow them to book or to, to block out, um, what it's going to cost you, since um, whether it's going to be empty in any case, or there's a high chance that you sell it. So using your, you know, a bit of what Nebita does quite well, using your predictive ability, you can price 
that option of blocking out an additional seat on a particular flight up to perhaps 24 hours before. And, and therefore, it, it gives value to, to the passengers. And for you, uh, usually you'll be selling something that you don't use in any case. So there are a lot of these things that you can continue on beyond the traditional, what we call the traditional ancillary revenue, which I think um, it's very little tapped nowadays in, in the airline world. It's almost a variation on waitlisting, isn't it? <laughs> you confirm on one flight, but waitlist on a couple of others, or you're saying that your plans might change. Yeah, it's an interesting concept. Um, so moving across to non-flight related ancillaries, we saw a, a great presentation from Bobby just before on um, uh, primarily looking at, at cars, looking at transport. Um, but we know, we know there's a huge range of non-flight related ancillaries um, available out there now to sell. Um, let's, I'll pass over to Eva. And what, what's the value proposition that, that your business brings to the airline industry? Um, yeah. Yeah, just to, to come back on the product, so what is Autohouse Combine? So it's really a platform, a technology, an aggregator, so it's not one OTA or one hotel chain. What we do is we aggregate, so every OTA, biggest one in the world, uh, so it's not, so we'll have Expedia, Booking, Agoda, and others, plus uh, hotel chains, and we'll show the customer all prices for each hotel on certain destination. So the user will find the cheapest price at one time available. So that's briefly what is hotels combined. And what we propose to airlines, and all, actually all the kind of website, it's um, yeah, it's another product, so we can do white label and you propose to your customer at the end of the booking or at the beginning or during, during the booking and uh, something neutral, so it's not one specific OTA that you will choose, it's all OTA that will show them and they will choose the best price at this moment. So it's something completely neutral, it's a technology that is really easy actually to integrate. Um, we can do that in two days. Um, it's totally white label, so customized for the website. And it's free. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a new, I think, uh, a neutral, neutrality to propose to align and to the user. And what we see more and more, it's the user is looking for things, different websites, uh, looking at reviews, cheapest price. Um, so they want to book their flight and most of the time they want to do their own package. So I discussed with different airlines yesterday and we're discussing dynamic packaging um, against meta search. So clearly it's, I was saying that today the user is changing. I've been in online marketing, travel industry for almost eight years and things are moving, are moving really fast and we see that user experience needs to change and clearly they are looking, they are surfing and they want to find the best deals. So meta search is in that case a pretty good solution. Thank you. So Stephen, um, of the non-related ancillaries, so hotels, cars, activities, um, are, are you selling those currently today as part of a, a spring year booking? Oh yeah. So. Uh, we have, a, we have a bunch of products we're selling uh, when you know, on, either online or most or during the mobile. And uh, we, uh, we, today, the, the, uh, I think the, the, biggest, the biggest products we're selling is the uh, is luggage and also insurance, as I mentioned, the, the, big four, the big four for our company. But also, we also uh, uh, also looking forward to f for some uh, other products which is can um, not only just making profit, but also can uh, satisfy our customer better. Uh, and we're also using a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the data mining and also the, and, and also data warehouse to 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 find what our customer to to study on our customer behavior. So what they really need when they, I mean, uh, before the trip or during the trip or after the trip. So uh, we are, we think that uh, the uh, we the, the uh, ancillary revenue is we should do it. You know, uh, not only we should, we, I mean, we should balance the customer satisfaction and also the profit. And, and where you're selling those um, uh, 
hotels or transfers or activities, whatever. Um, how, how are you doing that? Are you, are you selling those um, off your own website from um, you know, an a inventory that you have, you have got control of or are you passing the, um, the customer at that point across to someone else's um, website, someone else's inventory to, to um, complete that purchase? Uh, we we uh, we we wish we, uh, the customers can um, you know can finish their their everything on our website. Uh, we uh, we have our we we like for example like the uh, hotel for for, for hotel uh, booking. We have we create with uh, uh, different a uh, lots of uh, different hotels and also the and, and also the wholesalers. We just combine and combine with everything and also we have. Uh, uh, so for some hotel we have our own inventory, but for the most we're using uh, the, the, I mean, the others, the other either uh, I mean the others inventory, and uh, for for the uh, and for rest products, for example, the uh, bus and also and also taxi, we we also we have some we have a lot of, we have some partners we have a, we, create, we cooperate with some other our partners to serving our customer. And Kim Hoi, I noticed on your website you're selling hotels, you're selling rental cars um, in Australia. How, how are you doing that? Are you, um, is, is the passenger at the point they want to buy that then jumping off to someone else's website or is, are you controlling that? Um, how, how does that work? I, th I think one of the secrets is to try to not send them away to another white labour site. It's very important. Um, the uptake will be much better if you control it. So obviously it means you need to integrate it. Well, um, in my case, when I sell hotel inventory, I have um, hotel.com or booking.com, uh, similar to what uh, Eva does. But at the same time, we still integrate this within the booking process. And therefore, we have to do a lot of um, behind the scene, interfacing with the, the various external sites, so that the customer still essentially stays within our website during the booking process. Obviously, they can just go and book a hotel, and that's possible too, but most of the time, we try to integrate this um, within our booking. And the other thing that I would like to highlight, and I see some of my um, colleagues from ACE, um, very few airlines actually emphasize on insurance. A and that's strange because um, my experience is that insurance is probably the one ancillary that gives you the biggest and the best returns. So the same thing, we have worked with ACE um, a lot to integrate the entire booking process within um, our website. And therefore, we are reseller for ACE, but from, for all intents and purposes, it's uh, Rex Insurance. And obviously, insurance is important because whenever we have people coming to us and say, look, um, can you compensate us for missing out our next flight because you are late? We always tell them, look, we tell you, Please take insurance. Um, contingencies is not our responsibility. Contingencies are covered by professionals like the insurer. So that's why it's important for us to be able to offer insurance so that we can now tell them, we tried very hard to offer to you, you refuse. Now you have to take responsibility for these contingencies. I know um, many of the carriers uh, um, and maybe some still do, but uh, it required you to opt out. Um, and, and in some of the websites in particular, it was very, very difficult to work out how to opt out. So um, a lot of, in a lot of cases, there was a lot of insurance being sold, um, not necessarily because the customer thought they wanted it, but just because they couldn't figure out how to actually avoid uh, paying for it. Is, it, it. Are you in an opt-out or an opt-in yeah, situation? That's, that's a very good point. We, we went through the process and we started with opt-in, and we found that the our take-up rate for insurance is pretty high. It's around about 25 to 30%. When we started with opt-in, it was below uh, 20, it was like 15%. So we did an opt-out version. Um, the regulator in Australia is pretty strict. So for us to be able to offer an opt-out uh, option, we have to be sure that at various places, they could easily opt-out. And it's very clear. So we, we allow options to, so that even at the very last confirmation, when you see that your insurance is displayed, you can still opt out and immediately the, everything is recalculated.
So because we put in all these um, various uh, measures, we managed to convince the regulator to allow us to have an uh, opt-out version. A and that's important because the, the tick-up rate just went through the roof. Interesting. Um, at, at Lufthansa, um, d does Lufthansa have, I know some of the full service carriers historically have, a separate um, like holidays division or a separate sort of holidays department where they sell this non-flight related stuff or, or it, are you um, packaging in and, in and relating it now more to the, the selling of the seat along with these other ancillaries? Well, we, got a, we have a post, uh, uh, but we're not on, we also had joint ventures and when we started in going and tour operating and so we have Lufthansa holidays where, where you find and we don't want to, as, as Lambs is sell, we don't want to send the passenger away. So once he wants it, he finds it. It's, but it's not our core competence. So as we said, we, we did that on joint venture. We had to learn uh, how to sell that on, on the net. Uh, hotel, car travel isn't, as I said, our core competence. Meanwhile, um, I feel for the future, we're, we're not want to take the competition here with, with, with the hotel sites and with the AFER and, and the rest. Where our competence will be and where our chance for the future is, is the two, three, four, five, ten hours while the passenger's in his seat and can't get away. So this is where we will see in the future where we make additional revenue. And uh, Lim, once again, you just said it, I applause for every customer that's buying insurance because I make more revenue on that insurance than I will fly him. <laughs> what, what about packaging? Um, do you see packaging as a good opportunity for you? So whether it be fixed price packaging or whether it be dynamic packaging, um, the, the, the world seems to have unbundled. I mean, I guess the world sees consumers as being more savvy, more wanting more flexibility, wanting to kind of do more of the things themselves. Do you think packaging still has a place? Or do you think um, the, the kind of a la carte approach is, is really going to dominate in the future? Packaging still will have his part in the future. But dynamic, bringing things together, bundling up a la carte, of course, will give us the revenue. But there's not one or the other. It will go both ways, even in the future. And uh, the, the question for, for me that comes up will be, people in the next generation, they will not so much go on my website because they're not that loyal to a brand. So the question is, how do we get all this in silly revenues? How, how, how do we get all our offers in through the aggregators world? I mean, we all have nice pages. We show them the food, we show them the pictures, we have it all. But how we transport all this in the different point of sales through the aggregator world, that to me is the, the huge question and I will have an answer on my show later on. What about in the North Asian market? Is packaging still, um, Stephen, still do you think a, um, a big opportunity? Is there still a lot of group travel that are going to want a, a total package or where, where do you see that moving in the next year or two or three in, in, in mainland China and in Korea and Japan in particular? Yeah, well, the, uh, the week, China goes through from a, uh, you know, a, a, a group tour uh, to a individual, uh, individual, more individual tourism. And we can see, especially for the millennium, you know, they are more and more, uh, you know, personal, just personalized. They try to, you know, uh, different people. They, they, they always have their own. We believe we, uh, we, especially for the uh, for the leisure customers, we we prefer to give them. Uh, they have uh, they choose their own needs, but for uh, business customers.